This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. I've been playing video games for nearly 15 years now, and with the blessing of this YouTube channel, I've really been able to dive into various games, play through them, and get a feel for what makes a game good and what makes it bad. I'm at the point now where I can tell when a game has heart and personality put into it, and this type of game stands in stark contrast to a game that doesn't have these things. In fact, basically every game that I've reviewed since I brought back game reviews on my channel has been like this, each with a unique vision and a development team that knows what they want. Just look at the catalog. The Long Dark, Subnautica, Breath of the Wilds, Outer Wilds, they all have the same indescribable feel that the developers really care about each and every aspect of the game. You can tell that they aren't going to make compromises that distract them from their overall vision of what the game should be. If you still don't understand what I'm talking about, you can easily tell the type of game that isn't like this, and is a mere cash grab released by developers in the hopes that they can make millions. Look at any of the garbage released by Codehatch. They're all generic survival game clones that could be created by a 4 year old with access to Game Maker Studios. They use reused assets, trash sound design, and copy and paste mechanics that are basically interchangeable. There's no thought into what they do, and their only goal is to release something and make some money. This can also be seen by simulation games that add nothing new and creative to the genre and only pump out stupid shit that doesn't push boundaries and try to be creative in any way, shape, or form. Like there's this one company that's released a bazillion different bus, subway, fire truck, ambulance, airport police, and whatever other monotonous things simulators your heart could desire, and this is another prime example of something that's aimed primarily at making money without any form or creativity whatsoever. Now that I explain this, I think you get what I'm talking about. You know the feeling that I mentioned earlier, and you can tell when a game has it. Now, for a smooth transition, one of the biggest examples of this type of game for me is Astro Near. Merging a sandbox voxel environment with advanced crafting, automation, exploration, and resource management, Astro Near is a true gem that deserves an infinite amount of attention. I came across this game back when it first launched in December of 2016, and it's one of those games that I always come back to when I have no idea what I want to play. And every time I come back to it, it's just as enjoyable as it was before I left. It's quirky, simple, which you know I'm a big fan of, extremely charming, and a lot of fun with friends. So how does this little indie game that looks like it came out of a Play-Doh can hold such a special place in my heart? Why should you play it? Well, I'm going to answer those questions and talk about the very unique development story in today's video discussing why Astro Nier is so awesome. You know what isn't awesome? Losing your personal information to sketchy weirdos on the dark web. Especially when using public Wi-Fi at places like coffee shops or airports, your information could be flowing out to the masses because it's pretty easy for hackers to get it. That's why I've been using Surfshark, the sponsor of today's video, for over a year now. Surfshark is a VPN, which is a tool that's used to guarantee your online safety by encrypting data to hide your personal information from the public. But Surfshark is actually better than many of the competitors, with one account giving you unlimited access on an unlimited number of devices, even on gaming consoles. Browse privately, hide your location, or even change your virtual location to access region-restricted Netflix shows and online content with Surfshark. If you're interested, click the link in the description and use code ROBOCAST for 83% off and 3 free months on me. And not to mention, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's literally no reason not to check it out. Now back to the video. So about that cool indie space game? Yeah, let's get into that. Astroneer was a project dreamed up by Adam Brommel, Brendan Wilson, Paul Papera, and Jacob Leichty? Le Leichty? Whatever, you get the gist. Each of these talented video game developers and artists had worked on AAA projects like Halo, Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed, Doom 4, and quite a few others, so they knew what they were doing. They all got together and quit their AAA jobs to form System Era Softworks and begin work on their new game known as Astroneer in early 2014. Renting a small office in a co-working space, the team went through many different ideas and phases of development and even switched game engines. But they knew that they wanted to create something special and beautiful, and of course, that is exactly what they would end up doing. At first, they were aiming it to be like many other space survival games where you have to exploit and steal resources in order to survive a harsh alien environment. They were going for the traditional doom and gloom survival game approach. But they quickly changed their mind and decided to go with a bright, airy, and colorful approach where you felt curious and excited, not afraid. And it was a good thing they did this because the environment that they built is one of the first things that's helped Astroneer to excel to where it is today and to become such an awesome game. Astroneer has a truly unique environment. 
Low poly games are pretty common, but it's rare that they're executed as perfectly as this. The bright colors mix well with the rounded, soft edges of all of the models, and when combined with the outstanding and almost dreamlike soundtrack, you feel immersed into the world that Astroneer presents you with. It feels like playing a game through the imagination of a child that dreams of exploring space, and it's a breath of fresh air compared to all the heavy, thought-provoking, and exhausting games that are all over the place on Steam. The world is very calm, relaxed, and often pretty quiet. There aren't any hostile mobs or any serious threats except the occasional plant that you accidentally walk into, and combat doesn't even exist. There's no hunger or thirst or injuries or even health bars to worry about, making you stay focused on exploring the colorful and airy world. Each of these things go on to make the environment very fitting for the experience that the developers want you to have. Now, while many people do, in fact, find this type of game fun and relaxing, I have to say that it isn't for everyone. If you need action and risk to be stimulated in a game, this probably isn't the game for you. But if you just want to sit back, stimulate your creativity, and explore a whimsical space world, then this would definitely be a good pick. The environment and art in the game is fire, I will say, and a lot of that has to do with the team that helped to make this game a reality. Paul Papera, one of the co-founders and lead artists of the game, was a master of his craft. In fact, the other co-founders of the studio met him through an online forum that showcased his outstanding work, and they all admired the talent that he possessed. Just looking at his online portfolio, you can see the crazy things that he has created, and it's no surprise that his work helped to make the game so beautiful. Without him, the vision for Astroneer would be nowhere near what it is today. Unfortunately, Paul passed away in March of 2017 before he could see what the game would eventually become. But his legacy lives on inside the game, and it's part of why Astro Nier has become a favorite title for thousands of gamers. Art is, of course, important in making a game good, especially when it's about exploring. But if there's nothing behind the art, then it's just pretty to look at and will quickly be forgotten about. With Astro Nier, however, there is much more to the game than just the looks, and that's why it continues to be so awesome. The open world makes exploration good, and the beauty of the world makes you want to explore it. But there's a sandbox element as well. Every single particle of every single planet that you explore can be manipulated, and you could sculpt the world like the Play-Doh that it looks like. I'm telling you, imagine exploring space using the imagination of a child. It's the perfect analogy. Your character has a terrain tool that's used to mine resources, create tunnels, bridges, towers, and anything else you want. The entirety of the world can be manipulated to your liking, and you can even upgrade the terrain tool to make things more efficient and useful for your adventures. One of my favorite things to do in the game is to just sit there and aimlessly dig a giant hole in the ground for no reason whatsoever. It's like I just turn my smooth brain off and just sit there digging a hole because of how satisfying it is. But being able to sculpt the world into whatever you want is pretty cool and it helps to make the game so awesome. Now you may be asking yourself, what exactly is the point of the game? To walk around aimlessly and dig mindless holes in the ground? Not quite. The core gameplay loop involves progressing your space base to increase scientific capabilities, research more technology, and eventually be able to travel to the five different planets and two moons in the game. Different planets have different resources that you then need to harvest and get back to your home planet in order to continue your advancement, upgrade your equipment, and aid you in exploration. But the difference with Astro Nier and many other survival games is that the world is a tool, not an obstacle. When you think of something like The Long Dark, your goal is to survive against the world with the world making it harder for you to accomplish this goal. That's an example of the world being an obstacle. But in Astro Nier, it acts as a tool, and you can twist and shape it into various forms that help you with what you need to do. Let's say you need to travel across the mountains. Some other games would make you have to unlock something, like new hiking shoes or some fancy tool to be able to get through it. In Astro Nier, you can just rearrange the landscape and build a cool little road over it, pretty much from the beginning. Then you could hop in your vehicle to drive across the horizon and into uncharted territory. You use the aforementioned world to aid you during the core gameplay loop. When Astro Nier launched, it nearly instantly received positive feedback. In fact, even with an early access launch in December of 2016, the game sold over 400,000 copies by New Year's Day. And by March, yep, 700,000 copies. It's genuinely impressive, and that's when the game was still in early access and before a lot of the improvements that make it so amazing were added to the game. One such improvement, and another thing that helps to make it so awesome, is the inventory system. 
The inventory management system in Astro Nier is by far the best and most unique that I've ever seen in a video game. It's not the best in terms of efficiently getting items in and out of where you need them to be, but it is the best in terms of immersion and uniqueness. In Astro Nier, there are no inventory storage menus like how Minecraft has chests. You can't put your items out of sight and out of mind like you can in the long dark. To open your backpack and rearrange or manage what you have in there, there are still no menus. You just sort of zoom into your backpack while still in the real game world. And the same goes for every aspect of your day-to-day -day life. Going to craft something, you have to drag the physical resource into the canister. Want to transport extra items on your vehicle? You better play storage on the car because you can only hold what you put on there. The developers were not afraid to try something different when it comes to inventory management, and I like the fact that they took a risk, even though not everyone was going to like it. Going off of this a bit further, all interfaces and all aspects of the game go off of this no GUI mindset. When researching new things, you open up a little device inside your world. Each and every interaction that you have doesn't take you out of the world into some fourth dimension artificial menu thingy, but keeps you in the confines of the setting that you're in. This goes to make the game extremely immersive. There's no hotbars, and your oxygen and power are really the only things that you have to keep track of, and even with these, you can see them on the back of your character. Doing this builds off of all the things mentioned before, and helps to make the beautiful world, exploration, and core gameplay loops seamless and immersive, and it helps to make the game so awesome. All of the things that I mentioned are some of the many reasons why people enjoy this game so much. But there's one other major thing that I haven't mentioned yet that multiplies these positive qualities by 100. Multiplayer. Imagine all of the things that I said before, but alongside your pals, cracking jokes, saying stupid stuff that doesn't make sense, and crying about falling off a cliff 500 light years away from your base. It makes the entire experience so much better and more enjoyable. And not to mention, Astroneer even took the simple concept of multiplayer and made it better than it needed to be. You literally just join your friend's active world through Steam without even needing to make a server or change the game mode or anything. So your friend can join you and then leave seamlessly without any loading screens. It's pretty damn epic. Now with all of this in mind, I'm not saying the game is perfect. Very few games are actually perfect, so I do have a few small complaints. One, the research menu is extremely confusing with its layout, and honestly I spend way more time than I should trying to figure out where things are. It's not coded or anything, so you kind of just click through and hope that what you're looking for is in the right section. Two, automation was recently added, and while it's a cool concept, it's honestly kind of a mess. When dealing with things as complicated as automation in a video game, the lack of menus and simplicity that helped before actually hurts this experience. Automation is more of a chore than a benefit, and honestly it seems like an afterthought. And finally, the developers recently added objectives to help you progress through the game, and they feel a bit messy and strange in my opinion, but that one could just be me. Regardless of those minor flaws, Astro Nier is still currently one of the most enjoyable games in my Steam library. I really like how much heart and soul the developers put into their creation, and I'm excited to see what System Era does in the near future. If you haven't played the game, I hope this convinces you to give it a shot. What do you think of Astro Nier? Have you played it? What is your favorite and least favorite part? And does the research menu confuse the heck out of anyone else? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to protect your online identity and safety by switching to Surfshark with my link in the description. Again, it gives you 83% off in 3 free months, so check it out to stay safe and support the channel. I will see you guys next time, and peace.